So if you can't tell, I am at eBuyer and we're going to be building this uh, rather monster PC and this one's going to a streamer who will be uh, surprised with this system fairly shortly. You can check out that video on eBuyer's channel uh, as well, so feel free to take a look. I'll leave a link in the description. But nonetheless, we're going to be building this and doing a little bit of the build guide where we're doing. So just quick walk through the specs. We've got a Cooler Master H500P um, and also a Cooler Master V750 power supply and a, don't know if you can see it, but a uh, Cooler Master Master Liquid uh, 240. Also, uh, the more important bits, um, the GTX 1070 Ti from ASUS, uh, an AMD Ryzen 7 1700 with a uh, Strix X, uh, X370F motherboard, a uh, WD Blue SSD and a uh, WD hard drive, uh, I think it's 2TB, and some Vexier uh, Raider, uh, Raiden series RAM which is the cool like plasma stuff. So. Yeah, let's give this a shot and see what happens. Right, so first things first, we've got everything out of its box and uh, all uh, nice and ready to go. So we've got the uh, Coolmaster H500P and we're going to be sort of uh, obviously getting this ready for all the parts installation. We're going to throw the power supply in, then the motherboard, uh, processor, RAM, uh, hard drives, graphics cards, uh, cooler, and then we're uh, kind of done. That's, that seems like so quick, but it takes a while. So let's get started with getting the case ready. So first things first with the H500P, we're just going to take off the back covers. Also took off the top covers so that when we do go to install the AIO in the top, we'll have a lot of room and it's also just a bit easier to be able to reach in and stuff. Um, but we need to take off these covers so that we can access the cables and then slot the power supply in the bottom. So installing the power supply is pretty simple. I'm gonna go with fan down here as we actually have a, a removable dust filter on the bottom of the case. Uh, so all you do is sort of slide it in sideways. Uh, you probably wanna connect some of the power supply cables in first, but uh, you do have a load of room in the H500P down the bottom, so it shouldn't be too, uh, too difficult. Okay, so it turns out in the H500P it's not quite that simple. There are a couple of screws that you need to remove to get the power supply cover off. There's uh, two on the back and then I think two on the inside and two on the rear side as well. So you need to remove those first and then you install the power supply from the front side. So with all the space down the bottom here, you're probably going to want to attach all the power, power supply cables you need first. So uh, the first one that I probably do is the 24 pin. You will, uh, for this build specifically, need an 8 pin EPS power connector for the motherboard up at the top left. You also need a couple of SATA, uh, SATA power cables and a single uh, 8 pin uh, PCIe power connector and that should be it for now although the case might have a couple so we'll see uh see how we go. Right, so next up now that we've got the power supply installed and the power supply covers back on, we're going to be putting the uh, Ryzen 7 1700X into the motherboard. It's a pretty simple procedure, all you do is lift up the arm, make sure that the CPU is uh, the right way around, gently place it in and drop the arm back down, that's it, but we're going to be doing it on camera anyway, so let's take a look. And next up, while we're uh, on the motherboard, we may as well install the Avexia Raiden series RAM. This is really simple, just make sure that the notch is in the correct way around, and on this motherboard it is the uh, socket the, the dim that you put it in is the one not right next to the CPU, but the one just to the right of that and the one furthest right. So all you do on this board is the top tabs just need to be pushed down, make sure that they're in the right orientation, sort of slot them in at the back and push them down with even pressure on both sides and then they sort of click in like that. Do the same for the other dim and then your RAM is installed and you have a nice sexy plasma kit of uh, 16 gigabytes of nice RAM. Done. So there's a couple of things that we need to do to the case before we get on to installing the motherboard. The first one is installing the rear I.O. shield. Make sure this one goes the right way around. It's normally the audio connectors at the bottom and the gigabit LAN closer to the fan on the back. Uh, it's a really simple thing to do as well. All you have to do is just gently push it in. You might need to use a little bit of force, but either way, all you have to do is align it at the back and just push it in. The next thing you need to do is install the rest of the motherboard standoffs. These are the tiny little bits of metal that hold the motherboard up. There's already two installed in the center but because this is an ATX motherboard, uh, it requires nine screws, uh, three on the bottom, three on the uh, middle, and three on the top. So you need to install them into the case first, and Coolmaster provides you a nice little socket tool that you can use your Phillips head uh, screwdriver with to install these. It makes it a lot, lot easier. So next up is installing the motherboard. This is nice and simple. So I've already got the rear I.O. shield in, and we've already got the standoffs in. I've also got the 24 pins sort of slightly in the way at the moment, so move that out of the way. But um, the basic principle is uh, you just put it in at a slight angle angle so if you uh, slide the rear IO connector sort of in first and then you tilt it in like that the, on this case the central two uh, standoffs actually are a little bit extruded so that you can hang the board on it and you don't need to screw it in immediately although you will also need all of the uh, all nine screws total to be able to get it safely secured. Uh, that's the motherboard installed uh, we're gonna just uh, connect up this fan while it's here and 
Uh, then what we're going to do is install the water cooler in the top. So we're going to go grab those bits and uh, see uh, see how we do. Okay, so we're going to install the fans first. So this is basically just the case of moving the pump out of the way, uh, making sure that the fans are in the orientation that you want them. So I think in this case we're going to do it as an exhaust out of the top, and therefore the uh, sort of fan hub is going to be facing towards you and towards the pump, and uh, using the long screws that come with the uh, kit to get them installed. The other thing to mention is this, especially when installing uh, a CPU cooler, especially a liquid cooler like this one, you might need to attach brackets to the pump head itself uh, to be able to attach the actual pump to your CPU. In this case, there's uh, two sort of steel brackets that attach to either side of the pump. You screw them in from the bottom, and these are sort of hooks that go onto the uh, back plate for the motherboard, and uh, it's, it's pretty simple to, to install. Just make sure that you do install these prior to trying to put the cooler on, otherwise, it, you know, won't actually attach. A lot of air coolers have similar mounting methods as well, so just bear that in mind when you're building your PC. So don't forget, if you are going to be uh, installing a water cooler, or basically any cooler that isn't the stock Ryzen cooler, if you get a CPU that has a stock cooler, make sure that you remove this plastic film. It is the difference between your CPU overheating as soon as you turn the PC on and having nice cool temperatures. So when installing the cooler, uh, obviously you will need to remove that uh, a bit of plastic, but also just uh, you might want to try and get a friend to help here but otherwise just install the uh, eight screws up the top. I do recommend installing the fans first so it makes this process a little bit easier and also make sure that you have clearance with your motherboard and that sort of stuff so that you're not uh, bashing the radiator into uh, your motherboards and also check where the tubing comes out and how well it has to bend. If it has to bend really tightly try swapping the radiator around the other way as well. So obviously make sure you do connect your eight pin power connector up on the top left hand side that's something that I actually ended up forgetting to do back soon but otherwise uh, you will then throw in the thermal paste. You just need about a grain of rice uh, size on the sort of center of the CPU uh, and then you throw on the CPU cooler. Um, the first thing that I would do is make sure that you connect all the fan cables. On this board there are three headers up the top so you just plug those in uh, and then the CPU cooler just sits on top and clips around the uh, sort of stock brackets that come with the motherboard. So I think the next thing we'll do is plug in all of the rest of the wires including the 24 pin, the uh, audio connectors, USB headers down the bottom uh, and all that sort of stuff and then we'll install the uh, hard drives, the SATA cables and then the graphics card and then just sort of tidy everything up. So these little front panel I.O. connectors can be a little bit fiddly so just make sure that you follow your motherboard manual in terms of where to plug them in. Some motherboards do come with a little sort of uh, quick connect kind of thing which you might want to use and then you just attach these to the little block and then the block just goes straight on the board but I'm going to do these by hand as I kind of know where they go. <laughs> so next up is installing the uh, WD Blue SSD and hard drive so we're just going to shove this in the hard drive cage down the bottom and uh, there's just two uh, two drive sleds in there already so we're just gonna have one for the SSD and one for the hard drive and we should be all good. So just to mention that uh, we did recover the hard drive bays but it seems like the hard drive bays are actually front facing so you need to remove the uh, sort of front piece here before you can access them. Once you do again just a couple of screws you'll have access to the drive bays which just fold out and lift it pretty easily. For the hard drive all you have to do is bend the cage a little bit and slide it in. For the SSD we will need a couple of screws though. So once you've got your hard drive and SSD installed, the next thing we'll do will be using the SATA cables and the pre-attached, or hopefully pre-attached, SATA power connectors to power and connect the drives up. Right, and so the final and potentially favourite part is installing the graphics card. This one is ridiculously simple. All you do is remove the rear covers here, make sure that this little tab is pushed down, push it in, connect the power, uh, power at the back, and the two screws in the back, and then you're done. So. Let's get to that. So that is the system now built. Now we're going to do a little bit of cable management on it to make sure that it is actually uh, a nice to look at, sexy looking system. And then we'll give you some uh, nice sexy B-roll to finish. Cable management is almost always just a big pain to do, but it takes a lot of time and just generally kind of walking through the steps nice and slowly. In this case, you do have quite a few covers on the back that do sort of somewhat help in sort of effectively just hiding the cable mess. But we did cable die down quite a few things, to both uh, kind of to ease strain on some of the cables and just to generally make it a lot more visually appealing. Otherwise, here is the footage.
So that's the system built, we've got it on, hopefully you'll see either in between this or before this uh, some nice sexy shots of the uh, RGB fans and all that sort of stuff, but yeah, it's uh, it's a nice sort of relatively easy build, especially with the AMD chips, nice uh, sort of easy setup and should actually be a pretty awesome performer as well. So yeah, thank you to uh, Stephen for inviting me down and it's letting me an build it. It's been absolute pleasure. Um... Honestly, couldn't have done it without you. We are going to be whizzing this up to Synthesis. Uh, we will be putting a video, probably on our Facebook page, of us hand delivering this bad boy to her. Um, massive thanks to AMD, uh, Western Digital, WD, um, who else were we with? Cooler Master. Asus. And Asus, yeah. Um, we went with those because it all ties in nicely. You know, you've got that Aura Sync in there. Um, so it's all working perfectly. It looks beautiful, and I think she's going to be blown away by it. Yeah. So thank you very much, guys. Um, we're going to be doing a lot more content coming up on the eBay Gaming Twitter, tying in with these boys. Um, yeah, follow us. Follow. <laughs> See you soon. Cool. All right, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the videos that will be over there for you as well. Of course, if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button too. And if you're here from eBar's Twitter, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, there are some affiliate links and all that sort of stuff in the description and a Patreon too if you want to support me and help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis. And I'll see you all in the next one.